If you love easy DIYs from Dollar Tree, then you are going to love today's video. I'm Jamie, the Crafty DIY Guy. Welcome back to my channel. this first DIY, this might look a little familiar to some of you guys. I actually made this DIY, um, I would say probably about six months ago or so. It was a tray I picked up from the Goodwill store, and um, I added this uh, twine that I'm cutting off of the sides here. And then I did add that wallpaper that's from Dollar Tree down to the, um, in the center there, kind of making this a cool kind of farmhouse-y vibe tray. Now, I want to make something that's going to go a little more with my decor. This was originally in my guest bedroom, but now I'm kind of changing some things up. And uh, I'm going to make this be part of my new, um, not my new living room, but I'm, I'm, I'm kind of obsessed with trays. I have a lot of different trays that I like to use on my coffee table. So I'm going to make this one that's a little more fitting with my current style and my decor. I'm going to take all that twine that I did wrap around that and remove all of that. Just get rid of that altogether. This wallpaper is good wallpaper. By the way, the bathroom that I did, my bathroom that I did with this Dollar Tree wallpaper, it's still solid. No issues at all. And uh, me trying to peel this off of here, that just was not going to work. And so I literally just decided we are going to leave it and I'm going to spray paint it. I took it outside. I spray painted it black. Isn't it beautiful black? I love the way that this tray looks. Now, this is also removable um, wallpaper or, you you know, peel and stick wallpaper. I picked this up from Timu and I've had this for quite a while and I decided to go ahead and do something with it. Now, it's got this kind of, uh, that kind of rattan look to it, you know, and um, I thought that this could be really, really cool on the inside. So I did go ahead and kind of peel off the backing of this and I'm just kind of spacing it just to make sure that one, I cut enough and then also just to kind of get it centered. And then what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of taking this and sticking this down in in the middle and then just kind of slowly starting to work the sides out and I actually grabbed my Cricut tool for this and uh, by the way this tool worked really really good when I did the bathroom wallpaper as well so um, if you haven't seen that video definitely check that out there's an entire video that's de just dedicated to Dollar Tree wallpaper and um, that wallpaper is still in my bathroom to this day now um, I am going to go ahead and just take that kind of uh, cricket tool there and we we're just smoothing out air bubbles and just trying to get this as tight as possible kind of just working it around and as you can see i'm kind of pushing it into the edges there but uh, there's a method to my madness here and this this Cricut tool honestly worked really well um, the same exact way when I used it in the bathroom too. What you're essentially going to be doing is as you're kind of, um, you know, straightening out your wallpaper and kind of covering the bottom of your tray, and obviously you can do this with any kind of tray, you're also going to use it to help cut and trim away any of that excess. Look how easy this just peels off of here. And now this tray has a whole different look. Um, I did go ahead and go back through and just touch up some of the paint. Um, the wallpaper was really, really sticky. And you can kind of see where I missed some areas. I'm just using a matte uh, kind of chalk paint for this because I did use a matte black spray paint thought it was super easy and it'll wash off of that Cricut tool really, really easily. Now, I did want to add the twine back because I thought that that was a nice accent to the tray and it's definitely going to kind of enhance that new bottom. So um, I just cut a large piece of twine off of my roll there. I've had that roll forever bought it at, uh, I think I bought it on Amazon actually, and this should be linked in my Amazon storefront below. And uh, I'm just going to just add hot glue and we're just going to wrap this around. If you cut your twine a little too long like I did here, it can be a little bit of a pain in the booty, but I'd rather cut away some excess twine than not have enough and then have to add another piece and uh, literally flip the tray around and just kind of continuing to wrap. The only 
one thing I would say that I'm doing here that I may not have done in the past is I'm just kind of making sure that that twine is really wrapped nice and tight. So this is what the finished tray looks like. Really, really love it. But I'm gonna new. I'm gonna make something now that we're gonna add to them. These are wood blocks that I got from Dollar Tree. These are in the Crafter Square section. Obviously, if you have scrap plywood, you can make these yourself. I did take them outside and I spray painted them that antique gold, and I only did the sides of them. Now I have this kind of uh, leather, this faux leather. Um, it's the kind of um, the Dollar Tree version of the Cricut vinyl. And uh, we are going to make some leather bound looking books. You've seen those book stacks that everybody likes to do. I see them a lot of times like around Valentine's Day and the holidays and such. And uh, that is kind of what I'm doing here. Now, the one thing I will admit to right now is... Uh, I made my books impossible to open. Um, I should have kept one side. I guess technically I did keep the sides of the books open, but um, you'll you'll kind of see what I'm uh, talking about here in just a minute. I covered my block completely in the leather except for the um, kind of the top and the bottom is what we'll kind of say, the, the sides that are going to be exposed. And, um, you know, if you think about a book, um, it has pages that you can open and then you can read. And uh, my, my books are not, I guess they're technically not readable anyway. But, um, you know, there's a few people out there that are detail oriented and they're going to definitely notice things like that. Have fun with it. If you mess up, messing up's okay, right? It's definitely okay. What I would have done is probably just centered my uh, block in the wood and then, um, you know, wrapped it around the top and the bottom and then left one of the sides that I had spray painted gold exposed. That way it would have looked like pages of a book. You know, if you think about a book that um, might have like a gold, um, kind of a gold trim or the gold pages on it, then that's kind of what the, um, the thought was anyway when I was making these and it does kind of give you that look on the sides but um, yeah that that's what I forgot to do so um, I did trim down my leather here and then um, I also trimmed it a little bit too short however I will say I did improve as I made the other two I just kind of replicated this process and uh, completely covered my um, books <laughs> <laughs> to where you can't read them or you read them the, the lengthways, I guess. So this is kind of what they look like and uh, trim away kind of any excess that may not have lined up properly. And then you were just literally going to rinse and repeat and you were going to do a couple more of these. So I did three of these in total and it was the same exact process. Now, when I took my blocks outside and I spray painted them, I just stacked them on top of each other and then just spray painted the side. So that's why like some of the spray paint color isn't completely covering the block, but it totally makes sense with this kind of way that you're doing it. So don't paint anything that you don't have to, especially if you can, you know, save a little bit of time. We're all super, super busy right now. And uh, again, this is just a fun decorative accent. It doesn't need to be perfect, but they're pretty cool looking, right? So now I decided that I needed to give my books some titles. So I have these rub-on transfers and I had a lot of different rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree that um, you could definitely decorate with. And I decided to use these letters instead. Now, I did not want to take my letters and kind of cut them individually. So what I chose to do was just kind of take the entire packaging uh, out, as you're going to see here. And then I just kind of decided what I would call each one of the books. And then I'm going to do the rub on transfer kind of per book and per letter. Um, I don't know if that was the best way to do this, just honestly, because if you happen to lean a little bit on your rub on transfer one way or another, then some of the other letters come off and you have to kind of scrape them off. The one thing I will say that was a kind of uh, 
I guess, a um, a blessing in disguise was that the kind of having to scrape off some of those letters and different things did kind of give the books a little bit of an aged look, which actually worked out really cool. And so now this is what the books look like with their titles on them. They're stacked on that tray. I really, really love this. Now, this next DIY, I'm actually taking these shower rings. I ordered a shower curtain liner and these rings came with it. And uh, I did not want to put these on my uh, shower curtain. And uh, I had... I've had these in the craft room for, uh, gosh, probably six months or more. And I thought, you know what? I think I can make something with these. And I just kind of stuck them and forgot about them. And then I thought about how Dollar Tree sells shower rings and how you guys could really replicate this project pretty easily. So you're going to take your shower rings and you're going to kind of join them together like you see me doing here. And uh, we are essentially going to create a chain. Now, I have seen these decorative chains at places like Pottery Barn and Kirkland's and things like that. And they are crazy, crazy expensive. And I'm just not going to pay $60 for something that would, you know, I may use it once, I may use it twice. Now that I've got my real estate license, I am kind of kind of building up a little bit of like decor stuff so I can help with like home staging if somebody needs it. But um, this is something that I would not pay probably $30 for. So now make your chain as long as you want. I literally took this outside, I hung it up with a paper or like a clothespin and spray painted it this gorgeous gold color. How nice is this of an accent? I love this. And by the way, if you love tic-tac-toe like I do and uh, you want something that's really, really fun for the coffee table, you should pick this up. I grabbed this at Hobby Lobby. It's unfinished wood. Get rid of this little cell pack so you can know this little gel pack thing. Make sure the, the kitty cats and the puppy dogs and the kids don't eat it. And uh, we're going to paint my X's and O's one color and then we're going to paint our board another color this is the easiest diy ever and uh if you use spray paint it's even easier it's really cold right now so i'm not showing a lot of the spray painting but i spray painted the letters gold i used my favorite color blue i accented the lines with some white how chic is that this picture frame was also a fun fun diy unfinished picture frame this looks like it came from michael's but i ended up getting this at Goodwill and it was like 89 cents. So I thought, okay, this is great. And I wanted to do something that's very simple with it. I spray painted it white and believe it or not, this fell off of the deck and hit the carpet. And uh, it kind of created this weird kind of uh, tone there, but I loved it. I thought it was a perfect mistake. Now this next DIY, this is a tribute to my grandma. My grandma, Love butterflies. Anytime uh, I see a butterfly, I think of her. In the guest room, I wanted just like a very simple, just kind of little accent light. And these are so perfect for this. We all know that blue is my favorite color. I literally took this outside. I spray painted it blue. How beautiful is this? Now, when you've got this great grouping, I've got this beautiful frame, the butterfly, so, so cute. Now, this next DIY is super fun as well. If you love nautical, I definitely think you should do this. Grab some of this nautical rope. I ended up grabbing four bundles and I used all four. And we're going to take one of those styrofoam wreath forms. And this is that hard kind of styrofoam. Um, it will hold hot glue, by the way. It works really, really good with hot glue. And, uh, you know, typically styrofoam will start to break down. So I'm going to add some hot glue here and we're just going to start wrapping our ropes. Now, these ropes are not as long as they used to be at Dollar Tree. So if you want to buy something thicker and in a bigger quantity on Amazon or somewhere like that, Walmart, I am all for it. Definitely, definitely do it. I had these bundles of rope that were left over that I've, I've had every time I go to Dollar Tree and I see some, I pick some up. So I've got plenty of them on hand here. And uh, I am just going to continue to wrap this wreath form. But as you can see, if you do keep this really, really tight, 
it really does start to just look beautiful. Now, I didn't separate my rope pieces. I totally just covered this entire thing. I love the way this is, looks. You can kind of see at the top here where I didn't probably pull it as tightly as I could, but I knew that I was going to be covering that, so I'm not totally stressed out about that. I have this blue paint. I also have these wooden anchors that I picked up from Dollar Tree. Again, they've been in the stash. I'm trying to use my stash, and um, I just thought that this could be a very simple, very easy DIY project for the hopefully coming soon spring and warmer weather. I thought I would never say that in my life. I'm just going to take my anchors and I'm very, very easily just kind of using these Dollar Tree sponge brushes and painting those. Anytime I can do something like this with these sponge brushes and chalk paint, it is my favorite thing to use. The paint always applies to everything really, really great with these sponge brushes. If you can pick these up, these are definitely probably my favorites from Dollar Tree for sure in the paintbrushes. A lot of the paintbrushes, they lose their hair and they kind of fall apart at the Dollar Tree, but I am a fan of these little sponge brushes. And I also have found that if you buy an automotive sponge and do that and just kind of peel it apart or pick it apart, you can also use that, by the way. So that's a, that's a little tip for you. So I'm going to take my anchors and I'm going to go ahead and I'm painting them all, but I'm actually only going to end up using about three of them. I have a future project that I'm going to be doing with them. So I just figured, you know, why not go ahead and just paint them all at one time and just save those other three for something that's going to be coming very soon. Now, you know me, heat gun, love using the heat gun. We're going to take the heat gun out. We're going to go ahead and get these as dried as quickly as possible because we've got more DIY projects that we've got to do and uh, I ain't got time for all that. So go ahead and start to glue these onto your wreath form. Now, yes, I only painted one side. The other side's going to be glued up against the rope. It's not that big of a deal. If you want to paint both sides of them, by all means, please do. Please do what makes you happy, right? That is what my motto is for 2024. If it doesn't make me happy, I'm not doing it. And I don't want to paint both sides. Now, I did add a little bow on the bottom of this. I thought it was so cute. I love the way that this turned out. Now, this DIY is also super, super fun. You guys have seen me haul all of these iron-on Dollar Tree patches in the past, and you saw my jacket, I'm sure, at the intro. And yes, I took an old denim jacket that I've had from Old Navy, and um, I'm just going to spice this jacket up. Now, this jacket is meant to be kind of beat up and worn out. You know, that was a, a trend at one time. So you can obviously see where there's some holes in this and some fraying and whatnot. And that's okay. That's the beauty of doing something like this is because I can create something really, really fun. Now, I took the jacket and I did to kind of spread everything out. I don't know what happened to the footage, but I did iron on the patches. I used my little Cricut, my little mini press. It worked perfectly. These things adhere so nicely to the jacket. They look like they're embroidered. I did them on the front and the back, and this is definitely something that I plan to continue to add to anytime I find some fun Dollar Tree patches, and I'm just going to create something that's very unique to me. All right, you guys, let me know in the comments below which projects were your favorite. I definitely have to say I am loving this denim jacket that I made. I'm super excited to wear it out. I love that I've got the different patches and everything on it. I'm going to be adding more patches from Dollar Tree as soon as I find some of the ones that I've purchased in the past. If you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments below. Definitely like, subscribe, all those other things, and I will look I am looking forward to learning how to talk, but also to bring you more videos very, very soon. All right, guys, until next time, I'll chat with you later. Bye-bye. That's for Otis, by the way. <laughs>